It is Monday, and that means we're going to take a look at the media area today. In this challenging environment, it may be helpful to actually have a niche within this industry. And our next two guests founded a 15-year-old company that publishes high-end books sold in their boutiques along with luxury collectibles. How's the tough economy affecting this area of the market? Well, we're putting that question to Martine and Prosper Asulin. They're the founders of the publishing company that bears their name. Thank you so much for coming in studio today. Bonjour. You know, these days when we talk about the publishing business or we talk about the book business, it seems that we're talking more and more about technology and the Kindle. But you are actually expanding your business in the traditional book category. Who's buying books these days? It's a good question. I have to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good question. We, we, we are, you, you use the word niche. We are really in a niche market. We don't compete with Kindle and all of this mass book. We are in something completely different. We decide to be like a luxury brand and to protect our books in a different way. It's because we open our own store and our own distribution. It's because our books have, need a different respect and not just to be... Uh, so, so when you say they need a different respect, I mean, what's different about these, biz these books themselves? This is a vintage cocktail book you have out right now. What differentiates this? from something you might find in a Barnes and Noble or, or another mainstream. And I have to say also that it was um, an, a, a kind of uh, encounter the, the, the new clients. We had uh, an opportunity to be at Bergdorf Goodman mm -hmm. at, um, at the, the, the floor of the gift uh, some years uh, before and um, we found that the people was loving Asoline. And those people were not going to bookstores. They were going to pick up a gift and a gift with sense. And culture was assimilated some, with our style of books because it's a question of, also of creation, mm -hmm. the books, you know. The culture was assimilated at luxury gift and luxury because of rarity, you know. Luxury and rarity. And culture is becoming a little bit rare, you know. It, it is these days. It seems so. And this book that we've got here is extremely rare. You were talking about uh, couture here in the book yes. sense. This book costs five hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, but it's not expensive enough. It's made by hand. It's not expensive. It's not expensive enough. Enough. It's enough. <laughs> enough. I'm sorry. It's made by hand. It's a book on Oscar Niemeyer. We produce all of the pictures everywhere in the world, and this book, it's like a personal family album. Each page is glued by hand, and each picture. It's glued by hand. It's glued by hand yes. on here. Yes, look, it's tipped by hand. Look, it's, it's really, you have a feeling of something completely personal made just for you. And uh, it's with the collaboration of Oscar Niemeyer, it's something completely unique. It's, it's really made by, completely by hand. Each, each one, it's, uh, it's unique. So who buys these books? Are there book collectors who really constitute your core audience? Or is it the luxury shopper that you were talking of, about, Martine, who comes into a Bergdorf or a Neiman? It's uh, collectors, yes, for sure. But we have also aesthetical people who want uh, to have beauty and quality. And, and that's the, it's a, a kind of, I'm repeating the same, but it's a kind of uh, respect, you know, to, the, to, to, to somebody to, to give something about, um, about architecture, about uh, history of art or, more, mm -hmm. or of, of fashion, etc done with a creation point of view as we do and I used to say that uh, our books are also objects because uh, we, you have to, to take care about the editing of the book and that uh, we are very specialized in, in that but mm -hmm. I think that the object is also important all the details even the paper and all that made, uh, made the, the very important pleasure Beauty and pleasure are very important in our lives, I think. And now, interestingly enough here, Prosper, you're expanding in the U.S. right now. Yes. Back in 2000, France was 70% of your sales, but now the U.S. is making up the bulk of your focus. Yes, and we opened two new stores uh, this month. One is going to be on Melrose Place in Los Angeles, and, and one very big is going to be our main store in Las Vegas at the city center in the beginning of December. Wow. So, 
why the U.S. right now? Why not Asia? That's where we hear luxury still exists. There are still luxury customers in the United sure, States. Have absolutely. you found them? It's our focus for the end of next year, but this year we want to focus really on this American market, what we love, and we live here now. Uh, so we, we really, for me, it's really my main focus is here. And we open a lot. Of, we open four uh, corners with Saks Fifth Avenue uh, this, uh, before the end of this month. So and it's really our, Marcus uh, in San Francisco and, uh, and so and so. And it's true that these people is coming to us. And it's interesting to see that at mm -hmm. the moment uh, to uh, luxury brands are putting money in making iPhones or applications right. or things like that. They also come to Asulin to have a book. A very special book. It's a part these of memories. It's a nice <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, the two of you.